Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. This is a tale about the ship of dreams, about a young boy and a young girl who fall in love but are torn apart by their social class. And only at the height of their emotional commitment does the ship meet with disaster. Wait, no, that's James Cameron's highest grossing film of all time, Titanic. My mistake. <clears throat> This is a tale about a ship of dreams, about a young boy and a young girl who fall in love but are torn apart by their social class, and only at the height of their emotional commitment does the ship meet with disaster. This is the story of Titanic, the animated musical. Hold me, never let me go. Now before you say anything, let me answer your very first question. Yes, this is real. Some Italian fart over in Italy decided he wanted to tell his version of how he saw the Titanic. Which of course is completely different from that other little independent film that came out just a few years earlier. This charming little version has talking geese, Mexican mice, and, I'm really not kidding here, a rapping dog. I swear to God that is true. A rapping dog. This film is actually so bad that a lot of people debate whether or not it actually exists. Copies of it are very hard to find, and most people who see snippets swear it's just something done by a fifth grader on Adobe Flash. But here's the DVD to prove it, Titanic. As it says on the back how they embark on the real adventures of the Titanic. Oh yeah, because all the other stories you've heard weren't the least bit exciting or credible, were they? No, no, no. This is the exciting version with what really historically happened on the Titanic with Mexican mice and a rapping dog. Hello! Be afraid, my fellow viewers. Be very, very afraid. Let's dive in. No pun intended. So the film is actually called Titanic. The legend goes on. Yeah, because that doesn't sound at all like another person's song, does it? As the film surprisingly skips ahead a tad to show the actual sinking of the damn ship. Well, way to give away the ending. You can probably tell from this opening that the animation isn't all that spectacular. I mean, you have one of the greatest disasters of all time happening, and what do they focus on? The people rowing! Uh, you know there's an awe-inspiring cataclysm of death to your right, don't you? Really? Just gonna focus on the bowling here? Why do I get the feeling if this director saw the Hindenburg disaster, he'd probably take a picture of some pretty flowers! So, my first thought was, maybe the movie was so bad that I decided to fast forward to the end and just skip the whole thing. But nope! The story is actually told in flashback. Again, very original. As we see our main character named Angelica, who is forced to be a servant to her evil stepmother and two selfish stepsisters. Gee, does that sound familiar? Stop moping over that picture. You're never going to find your precious mother. Your precious uh. mother! You're wrong. I will find her. And my father, too. I'll find them both. Well, enough of that scene, I guess. This film's really on the move, apparently. As we jump to the boarding of the infamous ship Titanic. But from the look of half the passengers, you'd swear it was Noah's Ark. Boarding two of every lamest animal. Especially the racially insensitive ones. We've been on tour, senor, and cannot wait to get home, eh, muchachos? I'm Sinking Gonzalez, the fastest drowning mouse in all of Mexico! So we see Angelica with her evil stepfamily as she holds hope that one day she'll find her long lost mother. Maybe even, I don't know, on the stinking ship. You didn't pack our clothes properly, you clumsy girl. Pick up those bits of broken china at once. What the hell? They actually break stuff for her to pick up? That's not evil, that's Tourette's Syndrome! Come on, you gotta have some logic! We then cut to a family of mice unpacking down below. When did this movie turn into an American fail? How about if she comes to our party, Mama? We are having one, aren't we? I can't decide on my excellent Mama! Is it Italian? Mexican? French? We'll talk to Fritz about her. Just the snack. Well, wait, who are they? Wait, wait, uh, wait, huh? What? Who? Hey, what? If it hadn't been for you, I would be now- What just happened? Is this movie on speed? I would be now in someone else's digestion. You know, there's something you should know, so I'm gonna tell you so. Oh god, this is it. Working all day, now it's time to unwind. Kick back, relax, Wait, wait. 
If we're gonna go through this, I want to be prepared. All right, continue. I'll be busting the moves and I'll be busting the rhymes. We'll be busting up laughing because it's party time. Wait, wait. Sorry, this isn't gonna do it. Okay. Party time, party time. Everybody's feeling fine because it's party time. Wait, wait. Sorry, I need something a little bit more potent. So, yeah, this is just as bad as you'd think it is. I mean, never mind the fact that the dog is wearing a jersey and singing music that won't be developed for several decades, but what motivates him to do such a thing anyway? I mean, this was the lead in line. If it hadn't been for you, I would be now in someone else's digestion. Yes, thank you! If there's anything we can do to help, just let us know! You know there's something you should know, so I'm gonna tell you so. Don't sweat it. Forget uh, it. Enjoy what are you show. doing? Working all day, now it's time to unwind. Kick back. Did I at any point indicate that I wanted a rap number? I'll be busting the moves and I'll be busting the rhymes. We'll be busting up laughing cause it's party time. Everybody's feeling fine cause it's party time. Party time, party time. Everybody's feeling fine cause it's party time. Party time. I'm beginning to regret you saving me. I mean, forget the ship, this is the major disaster the film was building up to. Even if this was meant to be done in modern times, it still would fall flat on its ass. Hey kids, just remember, this Friday is the release of Shit Doggy Dog's latest single, Kibbles and Bitches. Hey, if it's good enough to play on a ship where the majority of passengers die, <laughs> it's good enough for your five-year-old any day. So, if you're actually dumb enough to stay after that scene, we find there's a subplot about two thieves who looks like they're being led by B. Arthur's crazy aunt. They're being followed by a detective who's apparently been hunting them for quite some time. Detective. Special detective Sam Bradbury, Sam to my friends, a threat to my enemies. Oh. <laughs> detective, really? I'd never be able to tell. By those clothes, I thought you'd be a plumber. So the thieves try to get this one woman's jewels, but are constantly thwarted by a dog who I swear was voiced by Sam Elliott. If I don't land her the right company, we're both gonna hit hard times. I'm talking about the dude here. They try again later, though, to sneak into the woman's room and rob her blind. Leave it all back to me. <laughs> Why is there... who? Wait, what? Where did... who? Wait, what? Huh? What is going on? Can this movie just pick a scene and develop it? It's like a comedy of errors, except they forgot to tell us what the errors are! After that, we jump to yet another subplot about a rich teenage boy named William, who's traveling with his... You mustn't dwell on her, nanny. Your nanny? Uh, isn't he a little old to be having a nanny? I mean, what age does he have puberty? 35? Relax. Who knows what's around the corner? I dream of my first building going up in America. By God, I'm so delightfully bland. I wonder if my little girl has had a proper education. Expect I'll never know. Oh, how about that? She lost a daughter years ago. Gee, I do wonder how this is all gonna end. It's just throwing me on so many loops. He goes outside to do blandish things when he bumps into Angelica. From there, it's contrived love at first sight. I bet you look ravishing in this. It's not mine. I'm so spontaneously attracted to you. You're the only person on this ship that has more lip collagen than I have. So as you can tell, this is just a role reversal of the other Titanic movie. Except instead of a rich girl and a poor boy, it's a rich boy and a poor girl. Good God, I hope that means she doesn't want to draw him nude. Is something wrong, Master William? I met a sweet, charming girl. I don't know who she is, or even what part of the ship she's in. She only said one sentence to me. But it was so... non-fragmented that I know that she has to be the one. So, will this couple meet again? You bet your poor plot lines they do, as William comes across a little girl who lost her ball. My ball! It fell down there! My ball! Ah, lost my ball! This is the worst possible thing that could happen to me on this trip! I'll get it for you. Back in a minute. While down there, he comes across Angelica again, as the two seem to... 
um, hit it off, I guess. I was too busy looking for someone. Now that I found her, I'm not going to let her get away from me again. Now get in the bag before I stab you repeatedly! So, even though they share a whopping seven sentences with each other, they know they are destined for one another. William asks if he'll see her at the reception that night. But there's one tiny problem. Angelica has nothing to wear. Luckily, one of the passengers has an outfit for her to borrow. Just like that other movie! I haven't worn this since my poor Francis took me to the opera for the first and last time. I'm lying, of course. I stole it. Meanwhile, we cut to the animals, who seem to be getting into more trouble, as they search for that blue locket that Angelica lost that doesn't in any way resemble- Oh, fuck it, you know the drill. It's incredible how much these animals have no defining character. In fact, they barely even talk. They just make random grunts and sounds half the time. <laughs> so they get the locket back and return to its rightful owner, just in time for her to be the belle of the ball. For some reason, they have a flashback to all the times they've been together. Yeah, all two of them. So as you can imagine, there's not much to really show in this flashback. In fact, aren't we already in a flashback? Did Angelica, while rowing on the boat, suddenly flash back to William's flashback while she was flashing back? It's like this movie has ADD. Didn't the animators have any Ritalin? I've been waiting all my life for a moment as happy as this. No. You know nothing about me. The first sensible thing said in this movie. Nothing you could tell me could prevent me from loving you. I'm a man. Whoop, gotta go. <laughs> and please don't ask me where my green gloves went. I'm sure they'll just magically appear in the next scene. Angelica. Oh, there they are. So the animals go back down below to celebrate the fact that there's nothing to celebrate. If you're feeling blue star, there's something that you can do star. Just stop your dancing shoes stop, and look at your star with more chocolate stuff. Same more thing, day in, day out, you're looking for something no stop. You rack your brain to try and figure out, what could you possibly do stop? Lord, this time for the show, this flat is muy stupido. It makes absolute no sense, so this song is we racist. Arima! In the party. We don't take food from strangers. <laughs> Stupid dog. What am I saying? You look more like a bat. So, I know what you're thinking. What's taking that iceberg so long anyway? There's an iceberg right in our path. Ah, there it is. Just pray to God it doesn't have a song to sing to. So the ship starts sinking, as this constant use of the same scenes played over and over indicates, as the brave, fearless crew tries to get rid of all the water with buckets. Are you fucking serious? Even Gilligan would do something so stupid! Look at this, they're not even throwing the water overboard, they're just throwing it at the ship. What the hell? Hey everybody, it's a splash fight! Oh, I'm gonna get you wet, come on! Get you. Woo -hoo -hoo, you're gonna get splishy splashy! So William goes down to the lower quarters to get his beloved Angelica. But as we all know from history, the third class passengers are trapped down below, unable to escape. <laughs> oh, that's nice! You just ripped through pure metal like it was a waffle! So the two are reunited as they try to get out at one of the lifeboats. Alright, women and children only. Go on, we'll be together again soon, I promise. I might be a little deadish when you see me, I hope that doesn't bother you. So Angelica manages to get off on one of the lifeboats as she watches in horror the sinking of innocent humanity. But at least they're not above inserting a little humor into this situation. Those horrible creatures are making faces at me! Well, maybe you're bothering them. Sit over here. No! <laughs> ah, hilarious! Makes me totally forget that hundreds of people are drowning and freezing to death. This is the funny horrendous sinking movie! Ah, <laughs> so we cut back to the Titanic as we see young William starting to break a window. Why is he doing that? We saw clearly before there's a door he could exit out of. 
Maybe he just hates poorly constructed glasswork. How dare they use casement window designs? It's so last century! So William escapes the evil window as he grabs a small child to protect while the ship finally sinks into the abyss. And just how bad is this horrible sight? It actually makes the Dalmatians cry. No! Not the Dalmatians! I'll take the deaths of all the men, women, and children, but a single tear down a puppy dog's face? That's simply too much! You know, for kids! Help! There's a child here! Ah, yes, because as history clearly tells us, all the lifeboats came back to rescue the passengers. God, this is so educational! Hang on! We gotta save him too! <sighs> good lord, the movie's trying to drag him down with it! But there is some good news on this maiden voyage of death. It turns out that Angelica has finally found her real mother. On the same fucking boat within the same fucking ship. What are the odds? I hope you understand that neither I nor your father wanted to give you up. I never thought you'd abandoned me. You just... leave me behind with no way to contact or locate you for the rest of my life. That's what a real mother would do. But what about poor William? Did he survive the fatal sinking? It looks like someone in the water. There's a body out there. Please try to get nearer. It's not him. Move along. Leave him for the fishies. Well, at least the animals made it out alive. Good, the survivors are gonna need something to eat on their way back to shore. <laughs> oh look, the dolphins are helping them out too. This is the happiest of God's slaughters ever. What's that, Flipper? The Titanic is sinking? Well, you'd better go help them, shouldn't you? It's okay, everything will be fine now that Flipper's on the case. Flipper, Flipper, faster than over there! William? <sighs> oh no! We're so close to William, and yet we're running out of animation! Throw all the other clips from the movie together! Yeah, Quickly, go, go, go! Use knows. all that stock footage! Use it to all your might! <sighs> ah, cutting Corners has saved us again. William! Darling, it's me, Angelica! She's turned into a Rorschach test! <laughs> Hello. Sorry I took so long. So William and Angelica get back together as they kiss in front of the sunrise. Oh, how charming. Wait a minute, wait a minute, where are you going? The movie isn't over yet. Don't you want to know what happened to everybody? I kind of assumed they drowned. Tortens and Bernice marry Kirk and Dirk who are gloatingly thinking they got it made. And here we have the ecstatic newlyweds Angelica and William, together with Mother Nanny Jenny, Victoria and the grandchildren. And the Dalmatians and their children. Well, here's hoping they'll all live happily ever after. See you soon! Happily ever after?! What the hell's wrong with you?! This isn't a postcard, it's the sinking of the fucking Titanic! If you wanted to be really faithful, you would have said, Kirk and Dirk got married to the evil stepsisters William and Angelica married as well as adopted the two Dalmatians and over 1,500 people died in one of the world's largest and most tragic disasters. See you soon! Where did this movie come from? What idiotic brain mash could so effectively miss the tragic center of the Titanic disaster? My guess is somebody just saw the James Cameron blockbuster and didn't realize it was based on a real tragic event. They probably just thought it was a fairy tale. So they put their half-assed version together thinking to themselves, you know what this collection of human misery needs? A rapping dog. There's a reason so many people don't believe this movie exists, because quite frankly, we don't want to believe it exists. It's so horrible that we as human beings don't want to believe that we created it. And with the help of Mr. Alcohol here, I might just be able to make that dream come true. I'm a nostalgia critic, I remember it, so you don't have to. Yes, destroy that memory. Hold me, never let me go. Wait a minute, wait a minute, where are you going? The movie isn't over yet. Right you are, you little obnoxious bastard. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. You know, I love cards, but 
Sometimes they're just so boring to look at. What with all those hard spades, clubs, and diamonds? Why not get some cards that actually have some pictures on them? No, no, not those cards. Yet. I'm talking about Geek Fight, Angry Video Game Nerd vs. Nostalgia Critic. As you can see, these are some pretty kick-ass cards with some pretty kick-ass artwork. A lot of artists worked hard on these drawings, and you can see their effort really shows. There's also a lot of creativity put into them, too. I mean, look at this, you got the evil Teddy Ruxpin, Chester A. Bum, even as that guy somehow made it into the deck. Including his weird-ass creation of hamster jelly. I don't know how the hell they drew that. But they did, and it's pretty damn cool. The only real problem I have is the angry video game nerd cards. I mean, look at him. He almost looks respectable. What a completely flawed misrepresentation. But the critic cards are great, making me look strong, masculine, and incredibly well endowed. Did I say that out loud? Well, anyway, you can buy them for $7 plus shipping. That's a pretty damn good deal. Purchases can be made at divingdragongames.com slash shop. Just go there and pick up a copy for yourself. Now, I know what a lot of you are thinking, what the hell is he going to put his face on next? Only time will tell, my friends. Only time will tell. I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to.